This video is not a substitute for reading the directions and safety warnings on any of the chemicals that we're using here in this gunsmithing project. A lot of these items are toxic and should not be ingested, so please always read the label and make sure you're doing this in a safe manner. With the buffing done on my brass pieces, I was ready to go to the next step. Now, again, this is a step that you don't necessarily need to go to if you're happy with how the sanding came out. You can put those high polished brass pieces back on your gun and, and just plow right ahead. Uh, I wanted to try a little bit of brass blacking. This is the brass black that I used. It's a Casey brass black. It's pretty much what everybody uses. And I wanted to try that out and see what that could do on these parts. I'm a fan of really making, trying to make stuff that looks used, homemade, and like it's been beat up a little bit. So brass black was something I had in, in my head really early on in this kit to try to take this kit and make it look like it's been in the woods a few more years. So what you do with the brass black, uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping your bottle clean. And what I mean by that is you don't want to contaminate the liquid inside of it. So if you, for, for example, what you're going to do or want to do instinctively is put your Q-tip or your little swab into there, brush it onto your parts, and when that dries up, you're gonna to wanna to stick it back in the bottle, but you do not wanna do that. When you do that, it's gonna contaminate your whole bottle and it's all going to react as if it was attached to your part and your whole solution is gonna be inert and you're gonna to have to buy a new bottle. It's not very expensive, so don't sweat it. If you do do that, I would recommend that you get it on your parts as soon as possible and um, and try to use as much of it as you can. But what you want to do is have a little plastic lid or a little plastic bottle. I'm always saving little condiment containers and things for use around the shop. And pour some of your brass black out into that. Um, you don't need a lot at all. I mean, I'm talking, if there was a, imagine a quarter in the bottom of your container and your container's the same diameter as a quarter, fill it up just so that it would cover that quarter. I'm talking like a 16th or an eighth of an inch max. For the number of parts that you have on this gun, that's gonna be plenty for a first pass. And you can see that all of my parts got a really heavy black coating with just that little amount. So you really don't need a whole lot. Separating into that separate container, make sure that you're not causing a chain reaction that ruins your whole bottle. I'll also recommend too, especially if you've used the buffing wheel for this, that you wipe down all of your the parts that you're planning on blacking with rubbing alcohol. Um, this is just gonna cut that waxy solution there. I had a few spots on my pieces where the uh, buffing compound was still kind of there and it led to some weird stains. But if you do have those and you didn't hit it with your parts with alcohol, don't sweat it. Continue to rub those with the brass black and that brass black is gonna eat through that waxy area relatively quickly and it's not gonna make your parts look bad at all. So just keep rubbing those parts and you'll power right through that buffing compound. When you're applying the brass black, I think it's it's something I found to be important. When you're doing it, make sure you're getting a nice even coat all over the part. You want some long complete strokes from side to side or end to end of each piece. I found that if I stopped halfway with my, my swab and then picked up and moved back and kept swabbing, I had really nasty looking stains almost from the brass black that were really hard to even out until I got to the Scotch-Brite process. So to make your life easier, make sure that you're coating the whole part evenly and then working on changing those wear areas with the removal process at the end. After I went through and blackened all of my pieces, um, I went back to the first pieces that I blackened. And this stuff only takes about two to three minutes to really dry on onto the piece. Um, so by the time you get through a first coat on everything, the parts that you first touch with that brass black are gonna be dry and ready to work. Now I started out trying to use a paper towel and it worked okay to remove that brass black and start showing that brass underneath, but I do recommend a Scotch-Brite pad. It's something I went to soon after my paper towel started to deteriorate, eating up that brass black. The Scotch-Brite's a really nice material and it's kind of a magic material, I think, uh, because the, the look that I got on my parts after using it was 
it looked a lot better than my buffing and sanding made it look. So I recommend using some Scotch-Brite. I was using some red Scotch-Brite. You can also use green. I don't know um, about the different textures. This is just some I've had around in the shop for a long time, but it really gave me a nice look on my pieces. I let the pieces then sit overnight. I wasn't really happy with the first go around. I've it, the only way I can describe it is I had a lot of black and white areas. So I had places where all of the brass black came off, and then I had places where it, I could not get it to come off, kind of down in some creases and things. And there wasn't a lot of mid-tone uh, gray, so to speak, areas that I was looking for. Areas that really, you know, kind of sh attempted to show age on things. It was either new or super old. Uh, so I... I went online and did some reading uh, and, and tried to figure that out. I came back into the shop the next morning and didn't really know what to do. So I started adding more coat to the brass black. Uh, to me, it, it kind of made sense to, you know, well, the first layer, I kind of got some, some white and some black, and I'm going to try to get some gray tones in there too. So the nice thing about this is if you don't like the look that you have with your brass black, you can take it all off and start all over. And I think in the end, I probably went through the brass black process five or six times, almost on every part, trying to get things to match up. And what I found to really work for me was getting my Scotch-Brite wet after applying the brass black. I was sitting in the shop, I shut off the cameras, I was just kind of, I was really disappointed with how it was going. Um, I was, I'm trying to hit a deadline for these videos and I just wasn't getting the look that I wanted. Um, and I noticed that my Scotch-Brite, much like a file or sandpaper would, was real full of just the, the brass black flakes or gunk on it. So I, I took it out and I, I washed it out and wrung it out a little bit, but kept it a little damp. And I figured, well, it'll dry out as I'm using it. It's, it's really dry in the shop and it's not going to affect the brass any. And what I found was as I was working that, that wet Scotch-Brite onto the brass blacked brass pieces was it was kind of smearing the brass black and it wasn't just removing it. It was almost painting with it. And by doing that, I was able to get colors that I had never been able to before. And I'm talking about working these brass pieces for like six hours trying to get the right color. And that Scotch-Brite being wet introduced new colors into the brass that I just had not seen before. And it was exactly the color, exactly the fake wear on the pieces that I was going for. So that's uh, that's something that really kind of blew my mind, uh, but I really recommend that you try that if you're working with brass black, especially on these kits, but also any other muzzle loading kit. This isn't, you know, special to the traditions kit brass that comes with it. This is any brass piece that you're working on. Coat your pieces in brass black, let them sit, let them dry, get your damp scotch bright on it and start working those pieces and you're gonna get a nice aged look that's gonna really Really come out uniform on all the pieces. Like I said, my filing and sanding after several days was not what I wanted, um, and I was really worried about making these pieces mesh back on the rifle once they were seen kind of on the same piece, uh, but the, it, they really came out, and I'm, I'm really, really tickled with the results, especially this being my first rifle kit. After finishing the antiquing on my brass pieces, I wanted to set them back into the stock to make sure that I hadn't taken off too much. Um, I checked while I was filing and sanding through that process, which is something that you want to do if you're worried about taking off too much. Just go ahead and fit them back to the stock as you're working just to make sure you're not messing yourself up. But after I had things done here, I wanted to go through and make sure that the stock and the pieces looked right together. Um, I ended up having to take off a little wood in a couple places, but it wasn't a big deal. I was using the um, the 400 grit sandpaper to start, and that was really overkill. I started with that because I was really nervous about taking off too much, but I found that bumping it back to the 240 grit was more than enough to remove just a little bit of wood, but not take off too much. A quick tip on this, when it comes to sanding the stock and getting it ready for stain like we are here, is you want to run with the grain of the stock. And I ran from, you know, always sanding from the butt stock towards the muzzle. This makes sure that you're not ruining any of the shapes or lines that come 
on your stock. Now, it's not so much of a big deal with this one because all the shapes are already established. I didn't have to do any of that work. But um, there have been a lot of cases where we see guns come in that somebody has tried to clean up and work on and they've just filed or sanded all the really nice original lines and shapes out of that stock. So you wanna make sure you're running your sandpaper from butt stock to towards the muzzle and always running in that motion. And just like we always are here, whether we're using a file or a sandpaper, we wanna run it at a diagonal. This is making sure that we're getting the most out of each stroke that we're doing with that tool. On a note too, is uh, for keeping the lines of your stock, it's really important to use a rigid surface when you're down to this sanding stage. The last thing you wanna do is be using your finger and eat away at those nice sharp lines that come with your stock. So I balanced what I used between using a piece of wood and some detail areas. Um, the wood's nice because I don't have to worry about it marring any other area of the stock. But there were a couple spots where I had to use a half round file as the back to my sandpaper to get into some nooks and crannies and some curves of the stock to get that cleaned up. 